Good morning, students. Today we have a special treat for you. Michael has just returned from a trip with his parents to Washington, D.C., where he learned a lot about how our national government works. And now he's going to tell us all about it. Well, it's hard to know where to start. I saw so many famous buildings and parks and statues, but the part I liked best was learning how our national government works. Maybe the best place to start is with the Constitution. Did you visit the National Archives? That's the building that stores the original Constitution from 1787. Yes, I did. The Constitution is very old and fragile, so it's kept behind glass. When I was at the National Archives building, we had to stand in a long line before we could look at it. Remember, students, the Constitution is a document that tells how our government is supposed to run. It tells people in government what they can and cannot do. But most of all, it creates three separate branches of government with checks and balances on each other so that no one branch gets too much power. Michael, did you visit all three branches of government? Yes. The first branch we visited was Congress in the Capitol building. My dad told me Congress would be a good place to start because the founders thought good laws make good government and Congress is the branch that makes the law. Can you tell us about the Capitol building? Well, it's very big. In the middle is a big, beautiful dome. On either side are the houses or chambers where lawmakers meet. On one side is the House of Representatives, where the members are elected from areas called districts that are all about the same size. On the other side is the Senate, where each state is represented equally. Michael, what do the representatives and senators do in the Capitol building? They get together to talk about ideas for laws. For an idea to become a law, both the House of Representatives and the Senate must agree. What were they talking about when you were there? I didn't understand a lot of what they were saying, but it was something about saving money for our grandparents when they have to quit working. How many of the representatives and senators are there? Well, I saw a lot of them, but I'm not sure exactly how many there are. Mr. Brown, do you know? In the Senate, every state is given two senators. Since there are 50 states times two, equals 100 senators in all. States with more people and more hometowns get more representatives. So a large state like California gets 52 representatives, and a smaller state like Delaware gets only one representative. How do they make our laws? I think I can answer that one, Mr. Brown. When I was there, I saw them holding meetings where small groups called committees discussed some ideas for laws called bills. Then all the members of a house meet together to take turns talking about the bills. That's called a debate. Yes, every member has a turn to talk in a very orderly fashion. Then they take a vote. If the bill passes in one of the houses, then it must go to the other where the same thing happens all over again. What happens if both houses pass the same bill? Do you know, Michael? Then the president must also agree with the bill before it becomes law. Class, Michael has described one of Congress's most important activities. But we must remember there are other powers Congress has. In addition to making laws, Congress has the power to raise taxes and spend money, to declare war, to authorize the printing of money, to raise and support our military, and to oversee the operation of the federal government. Of course, they also can check the power of the president through impeachment and removal from office. Michael, what other branches did you learn about? I learned a lot about the president at my next stop, the White House. The White House is where the president lives and works. He lives on the second floor and works in the Oval Office. It's good for him to live and work at the same place because he has so much to do. What exactly does the president do, Mike? One of his jobs is to make sure that good laws are passed. He can sign bills into law or veto them. That means he can reject them. I know he has a lot of other powers because we see him on TV every night, but I'm not sure what they are. You are right, Michael. He does have other powers in addition to signing bills or vetoing them. As leader of our nation, he is the commander-in-chief. That means that he can call out military troops to defend us. He can also negotiate peace with other countries. He can appoint high-ranking officials and members of the federal court. He can grant pardons for crimes. He must tell Congress how well the nation is doing. 
Of course, he can't do all these things alone. For some of them, he must get approval from one or both houses of Congress. Does the president do all of that by himself? Oh, my, no. The president has help from lots of federal agencies. Across from the White House is the old executive building. Inside are experts who help the president make decisions about war and peace, how to spend federal money, and how to deal with the states. Throughout Washington, there are federal agencies that help the president get things done. For example, the Justice Department and the FBI help the president enforce the laws of this country. The Treasury Department helps the president keep our economy healthy with plenty of jobs for people looking for work. Did George Washington have all this help? No, there, there wasn't even a White House when George Washington was president. Many things about the president's job have changed since the first president. All around Washington, D.C. are monuments to presidents that have helped change the nation and the job the president does. Michael, did you see any of these monuments? Yes, I saw the Jefferson Memorial. Who can tell us one of the things that Jefferson did as president? He made the country bigger by purchasing the Louisiana Territory. I also saw the Lincoln Memorial. Lincoln helped put an end to the terrible practice of slavery. Did you see the new monument for Franklin Roosevelt? Yeah, it's like a big outdoor park. Franklin Roosevelt helped the nation recover from the Great Depression when many people were out of work. When you look at the way the world has changed since George Washington and the many accomplishments of our presidents, we'd have to say that the presidency is a lot different today than when George Washington was in office. What happens if a law is unclear or if different laws say conflicting things? Like when my mom says I can play after dinner, but my dad says I should do my homework? <laughs> in our national government, those problems are, are decided by the federal courts and the highest court, the United States Supreme Court. Michael, did you visit the Supreme Court building? I sure did. It's located just across the street from the Capitol building. They were listening to a case the day we visited. There are nine judges on the court. Eight are called associate justices, and one is called the chief justice. These judges hear cases from people who have problems with the law. That's right, Michael. Some cases are about laws that are not clear or laws that violated somebody's rights. One of the most important things the Supreme Court has to do is to decide if a law passed by Congress and the President follows the Constitution. You see, the Constitution is the highest law of the land, and the Supreme Court must make sure that other laws don't go against the Constitution or the rights it grants to U.S. citizens. Back in 1803, Chief Justice John Marshall made sure the courts would have this power, and it has been very important ever since. So, the Supreme Court helps settle disputes and decides if laws are constitutional. But, in addition, it helps protect our rights to free speech, free press, freedom of religion, and other freedoms in the Bill of Rights that is part of the Constitution. How did the branches of government work together to get anything done? That's not easy to explain, but it's the most important part of how our government works. It's called the system of checks and balances. What? Let me try to explain. You see, each branch of government has certain powers that check the power of the other branches so that no one branch can take all the power. I still don't understand. Well, think of it a little bit like a baseball game. Each side has an offensive turn at bat, but each side also gets to play defense against the other. Let's say that Congress is up at bat. They hit a grounder. That is, they pass a law. But the president's team is on the field, and they don't like that law. With good defense, they can stop the law. The president can veto it and keep it from going into effect. That's called the check. But Congress can get another turn at bat. The Constitution gives them the chance to score by overriding the president's veto. Of course, they need a super effort, a two-thirds vote in each house in order to make their bill the law of the land over the president's veto. But if they get it, then they have balanced their power against the president's. But what about the courts? Well, the courts is a lot like the umpires at the game. They make sure the teams play by the rules. They enforce the rules of the game being the Constitution, 
to make sure the game is fair. But who checks the umpires? If the judges, like the umpires, don't call the game fairly, then they can be removed. And both Congress and the President have a say in hiring them in the first place. Everybody benefits from fair rules, so everybody looks for fair judges. In baseball, the fans want fairness, so they can enjoy a well-played game. In government, the people need fair judges to protect them and to uphold the law. As Americans, we all win when people in government play by the rules. But even better than baseball, we get to pick the players when we vote. That's right. Mike, is it more fun to learn about government after visiting Washington? Yes, it really is. Mike, it sounds like you learned a lot about government on your trip to Washington. Is there anything about the trip that you didn't like? Well, I liked what I saw as we walked around Washington, but my feet sure did hurt. <laughs>